Let's go to familiar verse today, John chapter 3, verse 16. John chapter 3, verse 16. John chapter 3, verse 16. The title of the message is Our Father's Love. Our Father's Love. John chapter 3, verse 16. Our Father's Love. Our Father's Love. John chapter 3, verse 16. Our Father's Love. The Bible says in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Brother Jay, can you please pray for the message? Father God, we thank you once again for allowing us to gather here in a local Bible in church to listen to your word. We ask you now that you fill your, within your speaker your Holy Spirit, Give the liberty and the power from on high to declare the whole counsel of God unto the hearers. And open our hearts, minds, and ears to your word. Help us not to think about what's happening outside. But help us to just fully give ourselves unto you and to your word. We ask you that you will fill each and every person here and those who are listening with your Holy Spirit. Help each and every one of us to hide your words in our hearts so that we will not sin against you. We ask you, Lord God, that you receive all the glory and honor. We ask you that you keep us from the devil's attack. We thank you, love you, and just say and pray. Amen. 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 Our Father's love, you know, this is Father's Day. And again, whenever it comes to any of the days, you know, we're not bound by it, but it's, uh, it's an opportunity for you and I to remember a little bit. You know, John 3.16 is very, you know, commonly used and people know about it. But one thing for sure is that John 3.16 is in past tense. So God, the Father, God showed love to this world by giving up his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. So first of all, in order to really understand Father's love, you have to understand that he showed his love already to this world through Jesus Christ, his son. Amen. So if you are not saved, as in if you have not trusted Jesus Christ and him alone as your Lord and Savior, you will experience your father's love, and your father is the devil. So a lot of people tend to get confused this day and age because they don't have the right doctrine, because they're not saved. So what they do is that, you know, I enjoy God's love. I enjoy, you know, his providence, everything. But essentially, you are worshiping the devil. Let's go to John chapter 8, John chapter 8, verse 44. So before we go on any further, you have to make sure that you have the right father. Yeah. Amen. Right? I, we all have our physical fathers because we're here. However, you need to know what kind of spiritual father that you have. John chapter 8, verse 44, the Bible says, Ye are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. So before you trust Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are the child of the devil. Yes. As much as you don't want to hear it, as much as you don't think that's you, if you're not trusting Christ alone to save you out of hell, if you have not accepted him and trusted him as your Lord and Savior, plus nothing, no works, no experience, anything, you know, get it out of there. And if you have not trusted him and him alone as your Lord and Savior, you are the child of the devil. Yes. Your father is Satan. Amen. You know, just pray to your father. Obviously, we have religions out there where they make you call father to a human being. Wow. And tell him everything. Yeah. Call priest, right? They're not your spiritual father per no. se, no. right? They're just out there to get all of your dirt. You know, if you get to study a little bit of history, go all the way to Babylonian religion, that was their tactic. Yeah. Nimrod, Semiramis, get all people's dirt. 
all their secrets, and they use it against them. That's why people are bound by, bound by many, many religions and cults. Why? Because they can't get out, get out of it, because they know the secrets, deepest secrets of their lives. But you're not supposed to call him your father. Amen. You have Father God in heaven. Right. But he can't be your father unless you trust Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Let's go to John chapter 1, verse 12. John chapter 1, verse 12. John chapter 1, verse 12. And you ask, then how do I become his child? Do I have to speak in tongues? Do I have to see him in my visions? Does he have to talk to me you know, in a real voice? No. You trust him as your Lord and Savior through the word of God. The Bible says in John chapter 1, verse 12, But as many as received him, Jesus Christ, to them gave you power to become the sons of God even to them that believe on his name. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Simple. You just receive him as your Lord and Savior. Yeah. Trust him as your Lord and Savior. Let's go to Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10. It's very simple, but it also gets very hard if you put anything in between Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verse 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Verse 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Verse 17, so then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So you have this faith through the word of God. Yes. This is our final authority. Amen. If your evidence of salvation is anything other than the Word of God, something's wrong. Yes. Because you and I could have all kinds of stories out there. Yes. You could be that Jonestown folk. You could be that Harold Camping crowd. You could be the bunch of all the cult leaders in Korea who says, I saw Jesus, I am Jesus, I'm the prophet, everything. Yeah. But according to the Word of God, they're not. Amen. So if, you know, the world's going downhill so fast. I think Southern Baptist Convention just said that, okay, they're going to say woman pastors okay now. Yeah. Completely going against the word of God. Yes. Right? Pastor has to be a what? Husband of a wife. Yes. Man. Last time I checked, husband is a man. Amen. I mean, this day and all, everything is, you know, like confusing and grayed out. But that's a qualification. Yeah. I'm sorry, ladies. If you're not a man, you can't be a pastor. Right. Simple as that. Yes. That's what the Bible says. Yes. Don't complain to me. Don't complain to everybody else. Complain to God himself. Yeah. Because that's what the Bible says. So that you could see the apostasy going on right now. Yes. It's going straight downhill. Accepting homosexuals into the pulpit. Accepting it. You know, Old Testament, even when you read Romans chapter 1, those sins were capital punishable sins. Yes. Capital punishment. You disobey your parents, you cuss at your parents, that's a capital punishment. Yes. There are a lot of things. But people tend to just accept it this day and age. Yes. Do you know why? Because we're in the last days. Yes, amen. You know. You won't understand love of God unless you get saved. Yes. So you check your salvation today. It doesn't matter if you grew up inside the church. A lot of people grew up inside the church, and a lot of people will burn in hell. Yes. Yeah. Trusting in false, how should I say, false faith, false information. So you have to check your salvation. I always say it's better for you to not take one in a gazillion chance of burning in hell, because that's eternity, than trust Christ if you're not sure. If it's second time, third time, fourth time. It's better for you to be sure, knowing for sure that you are a sinner on your way to hell. But one thing that people do tend to forget is that you have to have a repenting heart. Yes. You have to turn away from your ways and turn to God. Amen. Right? You know, you can't be saying, you know, I grew up inside a Catholic church. I agree with everything that they say. Idol worshiping, eating Jesus' blood, eating Jesus' body. You know, all these catechisms, right? Yeah. 
you still believe it. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's how you started. You got that, you know, baby baptism. Yeah. You believe in baptismal regeneration. And suddenly, some Baptist preacher goes up to you, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Amen. For by grace are ye saved through faith and that not of yourself. It is the gift of God, not of works as any man should boast. So no works involved, yeah. no traditions involved, no churches involved. Right. You're like, oh, I still trust Catholic Church. I trust you, Christ. Save me. It doesn't work like that. No. There's no foundation. It's almost like uh, you already have a dirt on your face. Yeah. And then you refuse to clean it. And then you wash a little bit of other areas. So when I look at you, you're still dirty. Yeah. Right? That's where repenting is. You have to turn from your ways and turn to God. Amen. Whatever that you believe, for some, it's a blessing that you didn't know anything. And then someone gave you the gospel and you accepted it. Man, that's great. But for some, you have some baggage. You, know, you have to repent from those things and turn to Christ and accept Him as your Lord and Savior. This issue is hot topic. A lot of people just can't understand. A lot of people just can't accept it. God is such a loving Father. I just have to call Him my Savior, and He's going to save me without the right heart. I mean... Imagine if I'm robbing a bank right now. I'm trying to kill people. I have a gun at their face. Jesus save me. And then you pull the trigger and you start killing people. That's not the right mindset. No. Right? Salvation is very simple if you do it from your heart. Right? Yes. But it's very hard if you don't do it from your heart. You do it from your head. Yeah. Right? Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. So you ask, what is that gospel of Jesus Christ? You ask, how do I get saved? Then believe what Apostle Paul preached, the gospel of Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1. The Bible says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand. Verse 2, by which also ye are saved. Through the gospel of Jesus Christ, you and I are saved from hell. If ye keep in memory that I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. So this is very dangerous. A lot of people believe in vain. A lot of people think that they're saved. A lot of people think that I trust that Christ. A lot of people think that Oh, yeah, you know, I, Holy Spirit came into me, and I had the Holy Spirit experience. You think, you think, and your thinking will send you straight down to hell. Amen. Because you just know it in your head. Yes. Verse 3, for I deliver unto you first of all that which I also receive, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. So you just have to believe that Christ died for you. Amen. Not for people around you. you know, some people say, God so loved the world, so he died for everybody, right? And it never becomes personal to them. It's as if God is a loving God. He will not send a soul to hell. And he already has saved the whole world. That's not it. No. It's individual. Yeah. It's you and me. It's yeah. like one by one. Personal, personal, personal. It's called personal relationship. Amen. Verse 4. And that he was buried and that he would rose again the third day according to the scriptures. That's it. So according to the word of God. Right? We have a sure word of prophecy. Through the word of God, you and I get saved. That's it. Yes. It's not through feelings. No. It's not through experience. It's not through your brain. No. It's through the word of God, trusting from the bottom of your heart, Jesus only, nothing else. That's it. And you get saved. Amen. That's why you need to have a childlike faith. Yeah. A lot of children, they don't have the capacity to question a lot of things. So they just believe. That's what it is. Simple. All you have to do is believe that Christ is God who died for your sins. Trust Him as your Lord and Savior. Accept Him in your heart. Nothing more. Then you get saved. Amen. That's it. Yeah. That's why the Bible says, He that hath the Son has life. He that has not the Son of God has not life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. In 1 John 
chapter 5, you know, verses 12 and 13. Simple as that. That is simple plan of God's salvation. And if you want to really understand our Father's love, God, the Father's love, you have to have trusted Christ as your Lord and Savior. Obviously, once you have trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, everything about God's love magnifies. Yeah. This is where you completely understand. This is where you and I can put ourselves in the prodigal son's shoes. Let's go to Luke chapter 15. Luke chapter 15. Luke chapter 15. I mean, this has been preached thousands of times. And it is a go-to preaching on a Father's Day for many of the preachers. And there's a good reason why. He chose loving Father. You know? Yes. I mean, point number one, God is a loving Father. Amen. Simple as that. People say, I want love in my life, right? You know, I feel bad, right? I mean, not everybody has the best upbringing in their life, right? It's not usual this day and age where, where you have your mom, whether you have your dad, you know, they haven't been divorced, and then you just grow up like that, right? In America especially, there's a lot of single-parent homes. Yes. And a lot of single-parent homes where mother is the head of household. Yeah. This dad beat dads are all gone. Broken home. They're gunners. Yeah. And especially young people who have children, like high school, right? Early in college. These kids, these boys, I call them boys because they're boys. Right. They don't know anything. Yeah. They don't know anything about responsibility. So they just leave it to the woman, the girls, and then they're gone out of their life. And a lot of children grew up without their dad. So you, you say, oh, man, you know, that's tough. It is tough. But if you trust that Christ as your Lord and Savior, you have the best father in the whole world. Amen. That's God the Father. Amen. You're like, man, I miss, but I don't know what it is for a father to love his children. But God the Father shows it yes. every day. I mean, that's a great blessing. And if you have grown up in that kind of difficult you know, environment, why would you reject Jesus Christ? Why would you reject Father's love, right? You accept every love out there. You accept love from Biden. You lo accept love from Newsom. You accept love from your mayors, you know, city council members, everybody. But you don't accept this free gift of eternal salvation. You're missing out. Yes. And you're going to miss out and you're going to wake up in hell one day. Yeah. But let's look at Luke chapter 15, verse 20. Right now, what happened was that this prodigal son had a departure in verses 11, 13. He left. He went to the far country. And 13 through 14, he had a wasteful living. And 15 through 19, he came to himself. And he repented. And verse 20 you see the return, but you see Father's love here. The Bible says, And he arose, Luke 15, verse 20, and came to his father. And when he was at a, yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. Woo! And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven yeah. and in thy sight and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet and bring hither the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry. You know, that's a loving father. Amen. You know, you know what that shows? You know, our loving father has compassion. Yes. He has compassion. Think about it. You know what differentiates Lord Jesus Christ, our God the Father, from any other religious leaders? They have that compassion. They had compassion for enemies, which were you and me. He died for the, his enemies. I don't know. I don't know about Muhammad. I don't know about you know Buddha. I don't know about all these people. All I know is that people were against him and all that stuff. They will never die for their enemies. No. Can you imagine Muhammad dying for a Christian? Yeah. I mean, no. Never. But Christ died for Muslims of the world, 
Christ died for Catholic, Christ died for Buddhist, Christ died for non-religions, every color, Amen. every shape. Yes. He died for everybody. Yes. And Baptists out there That's too, right. right? That's our loving Father. He has compassion. And especially if you're a man, and especially if you're a father, as a Christian man, you have to have compassion. Yes. Woman as well, right? Sister, you have to have compassion, right? You can't be that person who always thinks that you're right in a Christian home. As a human being, man, you and I are not right. No. Many, many times, ask your wives. Right. Ask your children, right? You're not. Get that pride out of the way. Amen. So how can you be more compassionate? How can you be more compassionate? As a man, as a woman, you have to get rid of your pride. Yes. Simple as that. Because, <laughs> you know, yeah, it's not simple, but it is simple. Why? Because once you realize who you really are, we see it from this prodigal son. He realized who he really is. Yeah, right. He was like nothing. Amen. Without from father's house, he was nothing. You know, interesting that, you know, Dr. Ruckman talked about is that everything that the prodigal son wanted outside of his house and looking for it outside of his house in the far country, his father's house already had it. Yeah. Love, money, food, clothing, and joy. Sure. Everything is already there. You and I need to show some compassion. Not only to the lost souls out there, but to your own family yes. and your brethren. Yes. You know, I hate it. I hate myself even when I act like someone who doesn't show any compassion to my family. Yeah. Because your pride, because of yeah. your selfish way, yeah. always gets in the way. Amen. It's like you and I always think that we're right. You're not. I'm not. Only thing that's right is if we go by the word of God. Amen. That's it. This is only final authority. That's right. Everything else is your philosophy, my philosophy. Right. That's it. Yes. And philosophy is very, very dangerous yes. to yes. follow. That's why when you and I don't have close relationship with Lord Jesus Christ, when you and I are not close to the word of God, studying the word of God, meditating in the word of God, memorizing the word of God, it's very easy to become uncompassionate and become proud yes. and look people down. Yes. You know, just common example, right? When you're really, really caring and compassionate about people, when people tell you something, even if it's against your own opinion, right? You kind of think about it, right? As long as it's not against the word of God, right? But say example, right? You know, you lost something at a family. Maybe you guys lost, you know, a ring or a watch. And you know in your brain it's not home. But your wife's like, no, it's at home. Your children's like, it's at home too. But you're like, no, 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 I'm right, you know. I'm right, I'm the head of the household. I'm the father, right? And then you refuse to listen to him. Come to find out, it's, all, it's been always at home. <laughs> you made a fool out of yourself. Yes. Right? When you're not compassionate to others, you will make fool out of yourself 100 times out of 100. Yes. Right? Bible-believing Christians have a really, really hard time of showing compassion. I mean, I was one of them. It takes time to change. But... You have that mentality, I have King James Bible, I have the right doctrine, right? And that I know that I'm in a Bible-believing church. And everybody else is like a dirt to you. They're like an ant. You just want to go stomp on them if they don't follow your way, right? You have to get rid of that. Amen. If your father had compassion on you throughout your whole life, you might be more different. But you, that's not an excuse anymore. You have the most compassionate Father. Amen. If you have trusted Christ as your Lord and Savior, God the Father. Amen. And you know more compassion and compassion through the Word of God. Yes. I mean, think about it. 
He saved wretched sinners like you and me. And he's showing so much grace and mercy to us. And as a child of God, you know, he chastises his children whom he loveth. But he doesn't chastise us all the time. Can you imagine if your father whips you every time you make a mistake? Ah, you don't survive, right? Like, you know, do this, do that. You didn't do it. You get whipped, whipped, whipped. Probably you can't get out of the bed, right? Uh, and we make a lot of mistakes, you and I. Amen. Just recognize that. Yes. So in order to truly understand loving Father, His love, you have to understand that He's a compassionate Father. Amen. And secondly, He's a forgiving Father. Amen. Man, that is the, one of the greatest attributes of our God. Yes. He forgives. Amen. I mean, if you and I truly go to Him with repenting heart and confess our sins, He said He'll forgive you. Yeah. But you don't. I don't many times, right? Yeah. If someone really wronged us, man, it's hard for us to forgive them, right? Because we have that flesh. True. But as Christians, if you had something done wrong to you, first you leave it in God's hand. But it did happen between person to person or whatnot. If they're truly sorry, and again, there's a big difference between chameleon and camouflage, for, you know, forgiveness. That's not a real asking for forgiveness, no. right? They're just like doing Judas Iscariot. Yeah. They're sorry that they got caught. Yeah. But there's difference. People is truly sorry. Yes. And as a Christian, you have to forgive. Who are you to not to forgive? Yeah, exactly. Right? Who are you? You're not God, right? No. And then, I mean, like Peter had a hard time, right? So, Lord said, forgive what? It's like seven times 77 times? 70 times? Yes. Forgive. Yeah. Let's go to 1 John. 1 John, chapter 1. I mean, it's like a go-to verse or verses for us many, many times. Why? Because we have to do this. Yes. Thank God that our God is a loving Father who forgives. Yes. Yeah, if he didn't forgive, I mean, God that who sends a soul to hell, for eternity, by rejecting his son. I mean, think about it. He's a fair God and just God. But thank God he's also forgiving God. First John chapter 1, verse 8. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. So don't be like uh, one false preacher out there who said, I never sin, because they just stick to the circumcision of Christ, and that's it, <laughs> and doesn't know the other doctrines about your physical body. Yes. Verse 9, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins. Think about it. There are two things you see already here. He not only is forgiving God, he's a faithful God. He's faithful. He will do whatever he said. Simple as that. You and I could be liars. I mean, that's the Bible says, like, I'll be true, but every man a liar. You and I, we're liar because we're born as a children of liar. The devil. Yeah. But God never lies. You know, he's faithful. Continue and to cleanse us from all righteousness. Yeah. That's why it is very important that you have a right relationship with God. Yes. That if you have committed sin, sins in your life, get it right. Amen. You know, confess your sins and let God forgive you. Amen. Simple as that. Yes. Not only that, you know, going back to Luke chapter 15, our God is very generous. He's a generous God. I mean, that's where grace and mercy comes in. You know, a lot of things that I enjoy in life, I don't deserve it, yes. right? Amen. But Lord had grace and mercy to give it to me. You, right? you know, if I become a beggar, if I don't have anything, I still can't complain. Yes. He gave me eternal life already. Amen. But beyond that, Lord gave me a Right, Bible, Bible-believing church, brethren, you know, a safe family and everything. What, what more do I need? Why, am I, why, why do I need to complain, right? Yeah. I mean, think about it. That prodigal son, when he came, you know, his father just gave him a gold ring, right? Yes. You know, I mean, best clothing, right? Best food. 
that's all there. Why are you straying away from the Father's house? You don't have to. He has everything there. It's just that, just like that prodigal son, you forget. Father God, what happens? Let's go to Luke chapter 15. Luke chapter 15. You know, due to time, you know, I'm going to finish it very soon. But at least one thing that we should learn. Luke chapter 15. Let's start from verse 12. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country. And there wasted his substance with riotous living. So he went to far country for us Christians. Anything other than Jesus Christ being number one in your life, you've gone to far country. That's it. Anything you have put yourself or put the devil, put the war and the flesh above God, then you have gone to the far country. Amen. It could be your work. Yes. It could be your relationship. Yes. It could be your looks. It could be anything. Yes. If you have gone far away in any way from the Lord, then you have gone to far country. Amen then you and I have become part of the son already. Absolutely. Then you have to come back. Yes. I mean, it, it is, number one thing is that you have to recognize. You and I have to recognize who we are, where we are, always. Yeah. If you have not judged yourself on a daily basis and get right with the Lord, then you're going to go further and further away into far country. So get right. Amen. Confess yeah. your sins. Yeah. Simple as that. Yeah. You know, maybe not as simple, but it is simple. Lord made it simple so that we won't be able to justify ourselves. Yeah, right. Everything is very easy to understand. One plus one, two. God made it. Do this, do that. Bless, you know, punish. Simple as that. Yes. Then if you recognize it, it's time for you to repent. Amen. How long are you going to wait? And then you just have to return. You just return to the Father's house, just like prodigal Sunday. Yes. Think about it. Our God is loving Father. His charity, His love is beyond our imagination. Oh, yeah. He has His open arm and waiting for you. Always. Think about it. Yeah. You know why I love dogs? When I go home, they always have open arms for me. That's the best feeling ever. Yes. I could have been bad to them. I could have had a wrong day, bad day, good day. But they are always open arms. They love you without any unconditional love Amen. they show Lord God, I mean, he has that love for you and me. How long will you run away from that love, right? You have to get right and come back and thank God for your salvation, love that he showed at the Calvary. Thank God he's a loving father. Thank God he's compassionate, he's forgiving, generous, he's patient, everything good about a, any person ever. And he's perfect. Yes. It's time for you to be more thankful and get right with him. Let's pray. Dear Father, first of all, thank you for saving us from hell. And I pray that if anyone who's not saved here today will get saved today. Getting saved is so simple. If anyone here does not know where they're going after they die, the Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of glory of God. There's none righteous, no, not one. You and I are sinner on our way to hell. We're born as a sinner on our way to hell. Remember and recognize that. But if you do not solve your sin problems, Bible says, but the fear of an unbelieving, abominable, murder, whoremonger, sorcerer, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is second death, you will burn in hell. But God commended his love to us in that while we are sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus Christ died for your sins. Bible says, Lord is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. You must turn your ways and turn to the Lord. Final step is that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth's confession is made unto salvation. If you are here today and whoever is listening, if you don't know where you're going, if you believed in vain in your brain all these years, wherever you are, 
realizing that you are a sinner on your way to hell, turning from your ways, believing that Jesus is God, who died for your sins on the cross, shedding his precious blood. Through this prayer, receive him in your heart, your Lord and Savior, and get saved from hell. Dear God, I am a sinner. Please forgive all my sins. I believe Jesus is God. I believe Jesus Christ died on the cross for all my sins, shedding his precious blood. Right now, with all my heart, the best way I know how, I receive Jesus Christ into my heart as my personal Savior and Lord. I only trust precious blood of Jesus Christ to wash away all my sins. Thank you, Lord, for dying for all my sins and coming into my heart as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. I pray that, Lord God, those who are struggling, who had doubts, have from bottom of their heart trusted you, Lord, as your Lord and Savior. Because the Bible says, but as many as received him to them gave you power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe in his name. If you have truly trusted Christ as your Lord and Savior right now, you're saved and saved once and for all. Lord, I pray that you'll bless the upcoming summer camp, bless the rest of the services, and thank you for being our one and only loving Father, Lord. In, and above all, Lord, even so come, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.